Growing up with an immigrant father from Mexico and a mother from Wisconsin, our household was rich with culture and traditions from two very different places. I grew up learning Spanish and being connected to my Mexican heritage and connected to being American. I always loved having two different cultures, but as I grew up and went to college, identity issues started to arise. There is a bias in being from two different cultures. I'm always asked, what are you, or mistaken for being an ethnicity that I'm not. I started to hear and feel more that I was too American and not Mexican enough to fit in. As my college years went on, I found a way to express who I am without care for what others might say. I thank my parents for always reminding me that being who I am and authentically myself is never wrong, and I'm grateful to have the support of my sister and brother walking alongside me in everything I do. I am a proud Mexican-American and passionate about advocating for everyone to show up as their authentic selves. College gave me the space to find my voice and speak up about my experiences because they do matter. My dad always told me growing up to fight the fight and I plan to do so every day because fighting for my passion and having my voice heard is a fight I don't plan to give up on. It's like <laughs> growing up, I could never run the fastest shocker. I could never throw the ball the furthest. I was, uh, I was never ever the star athlete. But growing up, I was always the most expressive. I was always the most articulate. And for the longest time in my life, I couldn't really identify what it was until I discovered the word creative. All my life, I've always been the most creative. And it's something that I've always cared about. It's translated in the way that I dressed, the way that I carried myself, and the way that I spoke. Furthermore, it translated into the love of my life, which is fine art. I've cared about expressing my feelings. I've cared about expressing other people's feelings. I've cared and I've cared. I found art. And in many ways, I think art found me. Health is one of the biggest aspects of life that people take for granted. When I was nine, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's disease. From that point on, my struggle with my health began. Due to these diseases, I struggled with anemia, fatigue, intestinal issues, and more. I'm from New Jersey, and unfortunately, private insurance was extremely expensive. In the United States at the time, my medication cost almost $1,000 for 30 pills. My mom has a lot of experience in the medical field, and she is the main reason that I was able to have access to the healthcare that I needed when I was sick, because she would know what to do. As someone who was born and raised in the United States and whose primary language is English, I can barely understand the healthcare system in the US. But I believe in a world where everybody could have the ability to get the healthcare they need, not just by availability, but by accessibility. I am here ready to fight for our basic human right to healthcare, and I am here because I believe that we all have the right to live healthy lives. Porque merecemos vivir. I remember the feeling of sheer excitement when hearing and reading that I had received a full scholarship to the Peter Gruber International Academy, which an anonymous donor had funded. This year sparked the beginning, the beginning of what became my path. I followed passion and purpose, pursued interest, chased my dream, and found alignment in my true self. Growing up in a supportive household, my parents provided positive exposure to multiple avenues for success. Soccer, music, and dance are staples of early childhood that carried throughout my early adulthood. Although these interests created paths of potential, something was missing. I was missing what made me happy. I reflected on my life experiences at every stage, and one common component was the connections I made with those I shared spaces with. I slowly began to realize that this truly made me happy, the ability to connect with others. This took care of everyone being seen and understood. Life has its way of revealing things to us through different avenues and paths, granting us options. However, these things can be deceptive. Accolades, accomplishments, and measures of physical success are praised as happiness. However, this isn't my story. The path I took led me to find that my purpose in life comes from genuine connection and interaction. 
I chose the path of happiness. And along the way, I found fulfillment. Where does your path lead you? When I first joined Watson Institute, I was still determining what I was getting myself into. In the first semester, I felt lost. But during winter break, I could reflect on my life, decisions, experiences, and expectations for my personal brand. Initially, I wanted to focus on education and how I will create a positive change in my community. Still, after reflecting on my past, I realized that I wanted to focus on creating a website for victims of domestic violence and sexual assaults in Argentina, my home country. So what's my why? When I was 10 years old, I was sexually assaulted by my neighbor. And for many years, I kept it to myself because I did not want to be judged or shamed. For many years, I kept that moment in the back of my head. Those experiences, as I like to call them, have led me to where I am now, in a place and environment where I could create change for people who have experienced or are going through what I did when I was just a young girl. I am not what happened to me, I am what I chose to become. During my first year while attending Lynn, I had experienced the loss of my father. On that day, my life changed forever. I remember grappling with the grieving process while trying to stay connected to the world. My father was my superhero. When I was little, every year on Halloween, he dressed as Iron Man in a suit that he fabricated from scratch. He was the strongest person I knew and was capable of anything. He taught me how to play music, golf, think with an entrepreneurial mindset, and to be independent. I was convinced that nothing could stop my father. It took me a while to realize that his legacy didn't stop on January 5th of 2022. Over the last year, I have grown a deeper understanding for the unpredictable journeys that we are taking on through life. No matter how hard we try to plan for the future, life is bound to take sharp turns along the way. By earning my bachelor's degree, I did not think I would be where I am today. Nevertheless, I am grateful for my support system, discovering hope, and the opportunity to carry on my father's legacy. This is my why. This is why I want to leave a positive impact on this earth. At just 18 years old, I made the decision to move away from home for the first time. I had lived in the same house my whole life and barely ever left the state of New York. When it came time to choose where to go to college, I decided to pack my things and move over a thousand miles away from home. It was scary at first and also heartbreaking to leave all my family and friends behind, but I knew I was meant to be more. I had never been on my own before this moment, but I had to chase a bigger purpose and meeting to help me find where I belong in this world. I always felt like I was meant to be by the ocean. A simple trip to the beach always cheers me up and I can get lost from the sound of the waves crashing and my eyes jumping from shell to shell trying to find something worth picking up. Despite the fact that where I lived most of the year was a different state than what I had known and all the people around me were new to my life, my family has always been my biggest support system and was always there for me through whatever. This big change in my life never would have been possible without them. They believed in my dreams more than I did, and one day I hope to look back at my younger self and see how far that little girl from New York has come. For whatever we lose, like a you or a me, it's always ourself we find in the sea. Growing up in three different cultures is the most diverse experience someone can ever have. My dad is from El Salvador, and my mom is from Peru, and I grew up in Baltimore. 
I lost a connection between myself and my culture. It took me months to reconnect. I had lost myself, and the relationship with my family was slowly becoming non-existent. I believe that I never lost my culture, I was just hiding from it. Now more than ever, I appreciate the little things that connect me back to my culture. The corridos I listen to take me back to my childhood when my dad would wake us up at 5 in the morning with his music. While these cultures connecting seem odd to many, even to me at times, it eventually became a core part of who I am. Although I had to learn how to embrace it, it's something that needed to happen to appreciate my life and the people in my community. No solo eso, sino que me hizo entender mejor a mis padres. Sus consejos, castigos y todo el sacrificio que ellos hicieron para que yo pudiera seguir adelante. I appreciate my sister who gave up some of her childhood to raise me. Because without us knowing, these things have became a part of our culture for years. Or my love for cooking reminding me of my mom when she would make us different meals from Peru every day. Even trying to make Salvadorian meals. That's why I want to better the representation for Latinos. Because the pain from disconnecting is something I hope no one will ever go through. You genuinely don't appreciate the things you have till it's gone. If someone were to tell me five years ago that I would be where I am today, I would have not believed them. Over the course of the last three years of my college career, I've gained so much more than I expected. I have found my sense of purpose, a new home that brings me nothing but joy and happiness, and I've been able to meet the love of my life. There are no words to describe the immense amount of love, respect, and appreciation I have for the strong woman that is my mother. My mother is someone who I have always referred to as my angel because she saved me from a time in my life where I did not see myself making it to high school. My parents gave me a strong upbringing that I am grateful for. In 2013, my life took an unexpected turn when my parents filed for divorce. My family broke in half and became divided and it resulted in a loss of a relationship with my father. This hardship as a little girl made me realize that I was going to go through a lot of change and that it was going to be hard. This is something I never thought would be the case for my family but suddenly it was. My mother instilled the core values and moral code I live by today, while encouraging me to always walk through life, knowing that I can achieve anything I set my mind to with hard work and determination. And for that, I am forever grateful. As this chapter of my life comes to a close, it is with so much joy that I get to walk into this next phase of life, knowing who I am more than ever and knowing what I have to offer the world. I faced my share of hardships, battled with my own mind, but I have learned to overcome those barriers. My parents have been my guiding lights, teaching me to live in the present, to love life, to laugh often. They've instilled in me a sense of self-determination. Why health and wellness? It's personal. I've struggled with weight, battled with unhealthy habits. I've seen firsthand the consequences of being overweight the toll it takes on individuals and society, and I refuse to stand idly by. I want to be the guide I wish I had to help youth lead healthier lives physically and mentally. I want to stand in front of more schools, share my message, my mission. I want to take that message worldwide to different schools, to different cultures. I want to spread the word, ignite a spark in these young minds and empower them to make a positive change in their lives and communities. But who am I outside of this project? I am a comedian at heart, a lover of laughter. I thrive on making people happy on seeing the brighter side of life, but beneath the jokes lies a deep sense of love, loyalty, and trust. I want to exceed expectations. I want to leave a mark to make a difference in the world. So as I continue on this journey, I'll remember this. The rearview mirror is smaller than the windshield, and that's why what lies ahead truly matters. How we doing, guys? Thank you. From the moment I stepped into high school, I had a clear vision of where I wanted to study and who I wanted to become. I aimed to pursue my dream of becoming a graphic designer, a field I was genuinely passionate about. However, during my high school journey, a new passion unexpectedly unfolded when I began volunteering with Operation Smile. Witnessing children suffering from cleft lips, receiving life-changing surgeries, opened my eyes to the power of social impact. Spending time in hospitals, connecting with children who later remembered my presence and thanked me with heartfelt hugs, those moments filled my heart with a sense of purpose. Saying goodbye to home was tough, 
especially missing the level of interaction I had when volunteering with social impact organizations. One year into my degree, I made a pivotal decision to combine my love for graphic design with my passion for social impact. Over the years, I've collaborated with various nonprofit organizations, purpose-driven companies, and social entrepreneurs. My values and determination, instilled by my family, were woven into every action I took. Today, I stand fulfilled. Through my designs, I've not only reached numbers and raised awareness about critical issues, but more importantly, I've impacted lives. My story is a testament to the power of combining passion with purpose. In every design, I find fulfillment in making a difference in the lives of those who once seemed unreachable. Willow pauses, and I can hear the drip drop, the laughing weeping song she's singing. Look at the trees, all trees big and small, they grow up and above and beyond, but their roots go equally deep in the earth. No one ever measured their roots. Measuring the heights has always been your task. Count the number of feet the roots go in. Find your will, they're much longer than the height. You told me you worked as an engineer. Did you ever measure a tree's roots? No, you didn't. I know it for certain. No one has ever done it. They all measure a tree's heights, not its depths.